when employees are be when employees work over 40 hours a week, the law requires that they be paid overtime. Now, there's an exception. There are a small population. Now, there's an exception. There are a small group of employees who fall outside of the Fair Labor Standards Act. This exception is called an exemption. There are several categories of exemptions to the overtime requirements of the Fair Labor Standards Act. There are several exemptions that apply to the Fair Labor Standards Act. Individuals that fall under the exemptions are not required to be paid overtime. Now, in order to do that, there's a couple things. First of all, in order to be exempt from the Fair Labor, you have to be, uh, you have, there's three categories that need to be satisfied. In order to be exempt from the Fair Labor Standards Act, there are three categories that must be satisfied. Okay, so the first category is this, the salary level. Starting on January 1st, 2020, any employee that, that are exempt from the Fair Labor Standards Act have to be paid a, a salary of at least 684. So that's an annualized um, income of at least the annual uh, category so if you're paying someone 684 per week, their annual salary is 35,500. So that's the first requirement in that you have to pay them at least a minimum amount of 684 per week in order to meet the exemption category. So an exemption is that you have to, so the first unit of an exemption for uh, the Fair Labor Standards Act is that you have to pay the required minimum amount each week. So the minimum amount is $684 a week. Now that's the first requirement. If you don't pay someone that much, that amount, then you void the uh, exemption. So if you don't pay the NB at least $684 a week, then you have to increase their pay to reach the minimum of $684 per week or you have to reclassify them as a ex non-exempt employee. Then you have to share hours and then you have to pay them uh, over any hours. Now there's a part two to this test, a salary basis test. As the courts look at whether or not you're actually paying the worker salary. So the salary basis test is really important. So the salary basis test works like this. You have to pay the employee because of how many hours they work if they show up in one week's salary. Now, it doesn't matter the quality or the quantity of the work. As long as the employees show up to work each week, you have to pay salary. If you temper or you reduce uh, an employee's salary pay, if you use an employee's pay for, uh, if you reduce an employee's pay based on the quality or the quantity of work each week, then you converted them from an, an exempt employee to a non-employee. The reason why is that you have voided the salary uh, requirements test. So as you can see, there is a uh, minimum amount that you must pay in salary and you must pay them a salary. Then there are duties that you must meet. So exempt, they must have a specific uh, and job function that they must meet. and all of these are outlined in the Department of Labor's fact sheet number 17, or you can look at our website for a full explanation of those requirement, requirements as far as the salary part. Now, 684 is the bare minimum. So by federal law, the Department of Labor, that's a federal statute. Now, has some states have protection. Uh, there's a couple of other states. So if you live or work or a business in a particular state, you will have a salary requirement in order to, in order to, you will be subject to a higher salary requirement. And so some cities, some states, some, so some states, some cities have limit for employees. So for example, uh, California has a monthly salary, 1,679. Colorado has a higher uh, weekly salary of $865.38. Maine has a higher weekly salary requirement of $735.59. New York 
has a higher week salary requirement, and Washington has higher categories of $1,014.30 per week in salary. So if you operate a business in any of these states, you're going to have to pay a higher weekly salary and make sure that you're in compliance. Now, actions that you can and cannot make. So um, you run into trouble if you, as a business owner, start making deductions from uh, employee salary who are exempt because if you improperly make deductions from employee salary, you may void the element of option. So there's some, the courts will look at uh, your, on whether or not your deductions are um, hindering or the salary part. So you can make deductions for uh, absences, have a full day, but you can't make deduction based on hourly um, absences. Like if someone's late an hour, you can't make incremental deductions on an hourly basis. You can make a half day or a full day deductions, but you can't make keep track of exempt employees' work and try to reduce their pay the hour. There are also some limitations on um, deductions for performance or violation of work safety or work rules. Once you start making those type of deductions, you are, you're in a gray area and you risk voiding the, the salary of the exemption. Now, uh, certain exemption categories, I'll briefly go through them, but um, in order to make this video uh, short, I'm not gonna go through every single one, but you have executive exemption, administrative exemption, computer exemption, and professional exemption. Those are the, so if you, so if you have any questions about overtime or how to, questions how to properly pay workers or if you're being paid or give us a call at 713-223-8855, we'll be glad to talk to you about it.